Hi Church, my name's Rob, I'm part of our Audacious North team and it's my privilege to be able to bring this devotion to you today. This devotion is um, based around one of my very favourite chapters of the Bible, it's Nehemiah 3, um, and it talks about the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah was a, a, a servant to the king and he was the king's cupbearer and that means that he was a very trusted member of the king's team. Um, he was trusted with bringing the very best food and drink to the king and making sure that it was safe uh, for the king to consume. So a huge amount of trust was placed on Nehemiah and the cupbearer was a significant part of the, the, the king's household. So Nehemiah was a, a, a man of standing. Nehemiah had heard that the, um, the people of Jerusalem, the people of Judea, uh, Jew, the Jewish nation who were living there, were under extreme distress and that the city uh, walls had in fact crumbled. They'd, they'd fallen down and were in a state of disrepair. Nehemiah was so moved by this um, that he wanted to um, go and lead an effort to rebuild the city and get the city back into the state that he felt it needed to be in and to ensure that there were places for the, the, the people to, to live. So he petitioned the king. He asked the king for the king's permission to go and do this. And the king allowed him to, to go and do it. So that's the, the, the background to where we get to in um, chapter three. And chapter three is literally a, a list of all the parts of the, the walls that were rebuilt, all the different components, like a big Lego set, how they were com, you know, constructed and put back together, and the families and the people who, who did that. And as we read, you will see family after family, people after people, who were responsible for the rebuilding of their part of, of the wall. And as we, as we read this, and as you read this today and, and kind of um, reflect on it and pray about it, um, I pulled out four elements that I think are appropriate and applicable to our, to our lives today. The first is that Nehemiah was a leader. He was a he was a leader and he, he had a and recognised there was something that he wanted to, to lead and he wanted to get sorted. He saw a plan and a vision for the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem and he led. And it's really important and, and, and I apply this to my life that I need to be led. I have skills and abilities and, and things that I can do and there's many things that I can't do. Um, but I need to be led in those elements as to how I can have the maximum impact in, in the things that I do. That, that happens at work and it happens within, within church as well. And that's one of the things that I wanted to draw from, from today's devotion, that Nehemiah was a, a, a recognised leader and that, you know, we as people, we do need to be led. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a, something that I wanted to, to share. The second thing I wanted to share is that you shouldn't discount yourself. What I love about this story is that I would imagine that list of people, um, if I'd written it, um, to be um, this family, the Smith family, with 30 years worth of building experience, the Jones family with 40 years of brickwork and kind of, you know, building um, experience. But that's not the case. What we find in the, in the kind of the account of Nehemiah is that every family kind of took their part irrespective of the skill set that they had and that they were led by Nehemiah and that they applied themselves. And one of the, one of the, one of the, the parts of the, the chapter that I love where it talks about Hariah, one of the goldsmiths, and Hananiah, one of the perfume makers. Now, I'm, I work in IT, so all my skill sets are computers, but that doesn't mean there's not a place for me in, in the aspects of audacious church or in the aspects of my, my life that don't involve computers. It doesn't discount me. So one of the things I wanted to share from this morning is do not discount yourself because there is a place for everyone in God's plans for, for our lives. The other thing I, I, I took from um, chapter three and take from chapter three is that we all have choices to make. I personally have a, have a choice to make on a daily basis as to what I invest my time in. And do I invest in the, the things that are just for me and that I would solely benefit from? Or do I make a decision and a choice to actually focus on building the kingdom of God, investing in myself, in prayer, in devotion time, in building the relationships with, with people across our, our church to serve in ministries um, or not? And again, to focus on the things that I want to do and that would be important 
to or just for me and my my own benefit and so one of the things that i love here is that the families listed in nehemiah 3 they they ultimately had a choice and each one of those recorded in chapter 3 stepped up and they decided to make that decision and you know undertake a task which to to many would have seemed absolutely impossible so we all have a choice to make the fourth and final thing that um, i wanted to kind of share from today's devotion from this from this chapter is that we're not on our own i love the fact that the families who rebuilt the walls lived together they lived next door to each other they would have done life together they would have worshipped together um, they would have studied together and they would have seen each other building their respective parts of of the wall and being encouraged by that and i love the thought of just being able to you know peer down the the wall left and right um, and seeing the wall being reconstructed and all the families participating and, and you know taking playing their part in that and what i love about um our church is that there are so many amazing ministries there are so many amazing teams serving our communities and 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 serving the the very kind of nature of 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 audacious church and making sure everything kind of does what it needs to do it's not possible to be part of all of these things but we what we can be is encouraged by these ministries and by these teams we can celebrate together the fantastic stories uh, the answers to prayer that we see and the faithfulness of god that he brings to to all these areas of our lives and then we can say, well, I can't be involved in everything, but I'm going to make a choice and I'm going to play my part in a ministry or in a team or I'm going to get involved or ask to get involved and effectively be part of the story that is being written. Um, and that we can become a builder like those families, like those people in Nehemiah, some of which would have never have held a building tool they wouldn't even known, actually, I'll use myself as an example because I don't know what building tools are because I'm not, I'm not great at it. But they wouldn't have they wouldn't have had that experience, but they would have said, This is important. We want to play our part. We want to make this choice and we want to build this city and build the homes for ourselves and for our neighbours. And that's something that we can we can all do. So I just wanted to share uh, from Nehemiah 3 all those those four elements. And as you read that today, I just want to I just want to pray for us um, before I before I finish this this video. Father God, I just thank you for for the, the families in Nehemiah. I thank you for Nehemiah that he saw something that needed to be done and that he he travelled to that region, to Jerusalem, and he led those families and those families responded and wanted to be led. I just pray for us as a church today, Lord, that we will recognise the areas and the choices that we need to make in our lives and how we can play our part in the lives of our families, in the life of our church, and that we can participate and contribute to all the great things that you have planned for us. I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, have a fantastic day. Take care.